Next three tracks we're going to go through are all upper motor neurons. They all start in the brain uh, and finish down in the spinal cord, the tectospinal, the rubrospinal, and the vestibulospinal. These are the big three extra pyramidal. Did I add something wrong there? Pyramidal fibers. They're still upper motor neurons because they still start in the brain, still end in the spinal cord. Extra, extra pyramidal. These are not the initiators of movement, but they do help in it. Extras within a movie or musical, they're just in the background. If there was no extras, the movie would have a hard time going on because it would look awkward filming streets of New York without anybody but the main actors. So they do have to be there, but they don't play as big of a part. That's how you can remember the difference between extra pyramidal and pyramidal um, fibers. So these three, the tecto, the rubro, and the vestibulo, um, they all start here in the brain. We're going to deal with the tecto first. The tecto is the one with that awesome video of the girl getting hit in the face by a watermelon. We all remember that one. If you don't remember that for some reason, Tecto, it's a little bit like texting. What happens when you text and walk? You get hit in the face by stuff. Um, I made a video in university. Uh, I filmed a car accident that um, I was a part of, bought a couple cars for real cheap, and showed the drivers texting and driving and what happened to them. So you could Google that or find it on my YouTube maybe. Anyway, the tecto spinal. It starts, let's start by drawing it here, in the superior colliculus of the midbrain, which is going to be up here somewhere. Here's the midbrain. Here's the superior colliculus of midbrain. That's where it starts. So some of the important, we have to remember every step in each of these fibers. Remember that? superior colliculus of the midbrain's tectum. These ones cross in the midbrain as they descend. So they're still crossing in the midbrain. They don't cross, I guess I drew that a little quick. They don't cross down the cord. They don't cross right away. They cross gradually as they descend, descend in the midbrain. Now the important thing about this tectospinal is that it terminates before C4 because it's dealing with postural reflex enhancement. Um, it's dealing with adjustments to the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid. So let's write those out. Tecto is dealing with the traps and SCM, because I'll never spell that right. Sternocleidomastoid are the two muscles, and it deals with stimulus from of sight or sight and auditory stimuli will have an impact on the tectospinal tract. Remember, this the trapezius, remember, is activated by cranial nerve 11. Um, just a couple points that I think we're probably going to have to remember for the test, that it's postural reflex enhancement and that it crosses over in the midbrain, superior colliculus, not a whole lot that is important. That again, um, not again, I haven't mentioned it. Page 81 in our notes. Next we're going to talk about two that go together pretty well. We've got the rubrospinal, we've got the vestibulospinal. The rubrospinal starts in the red nucleus, that's why it's in red, red nucleus of tegmentum. I don't know how much detail he's going to want, but I'm trying to remember every bit of detail. So if you remember these couple words, red nucleus of tegmentum of midbrain. And now that we've started going into the next chapter, some of these words and, and parts should be familiar to us. Um, the rubrospinal tract um, does the same thing. It crosses as it descends in the midbrain. So it kind of does a, a very similar path um, to the tectospinal. Um, one of the differences is that it goes the entire cord. 
because it's dealing with flexor musculature. Dan made a good point. He said he remembers this because someone told him when you flex your fist, your knuckles become red. His become white, therefore he remembers that it should be red. And it starts in the red nucleus, and that's why it, it is stimulating, activating the flexor musculature. So the rubro deals with flexor musculature, and it's the whole cord. I remember it because when you get mad, you flex your arms, you flex your pecs, you flex everything, and you turn a little bit red because you've got all this blood flowing everywhere. So that's how I remember that the rubrospinal is the flexor musculature. Um, at the very same time, because if you want to flex your biceps, you want to inhibit your triceps. So at the same time that it's flexing those muscles, it's inhibiting extensors. So just remember that as a pair. Um, if it's doing one, it has to do the other because you can't have everything flexing at once because that would not be very healthy. The other point uh, that he uh, pointed out here, the other um, piece of interest that he pointed to was the fact that this one can take over the corticospinal um, duties if they are damaged um, or that it has the potential to. So the rubrospinal can take over the cortico duties if it's damaged. Last one we are going to talk about is the vestibulo. Now the vestibulo nucle nucleus is in the MO, so it's a little bit lower. Remember those two are both in the midbrain up here. Then we have the pons, then we got the medulla just below that. Medulla is actually probably down here, but we'll call it a day on that one. So the vestibulo nucleus, Remember, it receives information from the vestibulo cerebellum, which we dealt with in the next chapter. As these come down, I guess we should start off with where it starts. It is in the vestibulo or vestibular nucleus, which is in the MO. Um, another name he has here is the Dieter's nucleus, but I don't like that word so I never remember it. These ones are unique in that they don't cross. So they come down, they go to the whole cord, just like the rubro, but they don't cross, so they do the whole thing. The vestibulo deals with ext extensor muscles, because when you fall, you put your hands back and your extensors are flexed. So it's dealing with postural adjustments and muscle tone postural adjustments, muscle tone, and it means orientation, if that helps you remember. It helps you maintain orientation when you're falling. So don't get this confused with the tectospinal, which is your neck, and postural adjustments um, they're dealing with your trapezius because it, there's some similar wording, but this one does enhance spinal reflex capability. And that's a big one, I think he emphasized that. Spinal reflex. Remember, it's spinal, not necessarily neck, but spinal, so it could be anywhere along the spine. And that's the three that we need to remember. There wasn't a whole lot of information about them. Um, just remember where they start. Remember whether they're contra or ipsilateral. And remember the flexors for rubro, extensors for vestibular. Remember that they both inhibit the opposite. So I didn't write down the vestibular nucleus inhibits flexors. The tecto is dealing with stimuli of sight and auditory stimuli that comes in and tells it, hey, you need to move your head and look out. Um, those are the three important ones that we need to know, the three, the three extra pyramidal important uh, pathways there. So that'll do for the tracks. We have three more that we didn't talk about a whole lot that were not on the quiz, but I still tend to think that they'll be on our exam.